Hey there, YouTube. <sighs> All right, this is going to be a video that I've not really wanted to do. Um, I have rental properties. And, you know, every now and again, a tenant moves out either without notice or um, gives very short notice. And, you know, they leave the property with a little bit of trash and a little bit of left behinds and whatever. And, you know, that's what a deposit is for. Um, however, I have a property that, um, it's kind of an oddball property I bought a couple years ago. It's several acres. It's five acres, almost five acres. And it had uh, two RV slots on the front. There used to be a mobile home there. And so there's a sewer or there's a septic tank and there's wiring and there's plumbing and there's everything up there. So it's, it's, there's a mobile home in the back. There's a mobile home that's a storage. There was another mobile home that was like a utility shed. And then there was the RV slot in the front. Now, it took almost two years to clean this property up. Um, it was a mess when I bought the property. You know, we got the grass under control and we, it looked, it was nice. I mean, it was, it wasn't, you know, the Taj Mahal and it wasn't anything spectacular, but there was a couple that came to me in October. I was advertising that I had this RV slot for rent and I had a, an RV that my wife and I had purchased and you'll see in some of our other videos that are on this channel. It's a 96 Airstream Land Yacht. And it was, in, it was in good shape. I mean, you know, for the age it had some problems, but you know, they, they promised the world that, you know, they wanted to buy it. And I gave it, you know, I sold it to them on, on payments. I said, was, you know, and they were gonna live on the property in the, in the RV. And, um, you know, he was going to somewhat caretake the property. So, we made a deal. And I'm driving out to the property now. But we made a deal. And she was, she was pregnant at the time. She was due in December. Um... Now I still use a portion of the property. I have bees and some other stuff that I do on the property. I have a barn that I had um, put in before they moved in. And um, so they had access to the third portion of the property. They made three payments. They made a down payment and they made two monthly payments on the purchase of the RV. Um, they were also supposed to pay for the RV slot that was on the property for the RV being there. So it was a manageable, it was like $550 a month or $560 a month total between the two payments. Um, he works doing some kind of handyman stuff or whatever. And she works at Walmart. Um, it got to a point there was a, a nine thousand dollar trailer that didn't belong to me that was removed off the property i brought it up to him because all fingers started pointing in that direction i had my suspicions my suspicions were correct i brought it up to him that's kind of when the, the quote-unquote trouble started. Um, they immediately stopped payment. They stopped paying. Um, they started trashing the property. And um, when I say trashing, I mean trashing the property. They've totally trashed the RV. Uh, I had to sue them with two different lawsuits. One for eviction, which I won hands down. Um, 
they didn't pay the 1600 and change that they were supposed to pay. I got rid of possession, got the property back. I did my first inspection in the RV and um, yeah, it's a total loss. The RV is a total loss. The second lawsuit is for the money damages of the deal. Um, I'm on my way there now. I should be there in a few minutes. So the other part of this was the tow car that we used for the Airstream Land Yacht is a Dodge Neon. A little Dodge Neon, nothing fancy. Um, you know, I paid $600 for it, I think. But in, after I bought it, I put in a new radiator. I put on new tires. I put on new brakes. I put on new struts. Um, fixed the air conditioning. I mean, it was a it was a decent running car. It needed a clutch. The clutch went out on it, and I just decided I didn't want to put any more money into the situation. Um, so I had this Dodge Neon, and I was out on the property one day, and they had mentioned they only have one car. my share of, I don't know if deadbeats is the right word, scumbags are the right word, professional users. Um, this is a professional couple. They absolutely trashed my property. Let me, uh, let me take you for a little walk. Let's, let's go, let's go take a walk. Okay, so here's the property. This area up here was all clear. There was no tires, no cement, no garbage. They had a garage sale. They left all this crap. What they didn't sell, they left. Um, all this, all this stuff, and food cans crappy furniture, busted, crap everywhere, junk, trash. Here's the neon. Video doesn't lie. There's the front tires for the neon. There's the front axle for one side. Here's the axle for the other. This is the way that they left the property. Now, none of this was here when they moved in. This is all crap that they have left when they left. I mean, we can't even mow the grass because there's crap everywhere, you know? Um, they trashed the RV, then they moved out of the RV. They brought in another camper that sat right here. Um, no contract for that, no permission for that know anything and 
When they left, this is what was left. This is how they left the property. Um, they had dogs over here. The dogs tore everything up. Clothing and stuff and crap just left everywhere. This is the way they've left the property. I mean, there's old furniture that they left that they got from a neighbor. Just absolutely trashed. Here's the front of the RV. There was a fence here that I, that I supplied all the fence panels for and the posts. He tore everything out and burned it all. Um, they left appliances and all this clothing and all this stuff. I mean, if you look, it's just absolutely insane, the stuff that's left. And we haven't even gotten into the RV yet. <laughs> So this is this is the crap that was left outside of the RV when they left. Now there was a lock on this door. Why they took the lock off, I have no idea. But let me tell you, if I can stand the smell, you're going to be in for a treat. Okay, so here's the inside of the RV. I had to put bug bombs. And to bug bomb it because I couldn't walk in here for more than a couple of feet and my feet and legs were covered with fleas. This is all the stuff that they left. I haven't even looked in the bathroom yet. But this is the way they left it. This is the master bedroom back here. Holes punched in the floor. Junk and crap and left. Everything left. So here's the bathroom. Dirty diapers, poopy diapers. My feet are covered with fleas. More food and junk. More stuff. Old food, dirty diapers. I mean, this is just, I can genuinely say this is one of the worst take backs that I have ever, ever had. It's going to take me probably a couple of weeks to get this place cleaned up. I'm going to have to have the RV towed out of here. Um, I don't know exactly what's going to happen with the neon. If that guy calls me back or not, I don't know. Sit down here. Fleas. There's the fleas. <sighs> well, you know what they say. You don't really know somebody until you live with them or rent to them. And I obviously know who these people are. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know what? Just one more time. I'm just going to give you a quickie look around. There it is. And I'll tell you what. Turn the sound off on that last little segment. Turn the sound completely off and just judge for yourself. So, in any event, that's what I'm dealing with. Tenants from hell, as it were. That's going to be the name of this video. Tenants from hell. So, thanks. I don't want your understand. I don't want your pity and I don't need your understanding. I just wanted to make a permanent record of the situation because we do have a court hearing coming up in the future. And um, 
this is going to be evidence of, of the way the property was left, no doubt about it. All right, have a good afternoon. If you have tenants, treat them, treat them nice. Treat them as I treated my tenants. You know, I, I helped them and I gave them stuff, and, and this is the way you're repaid, you know. Some people are professional scumbags, and these people are, absolutely. So, have a good afternoon. I'm on my way back home after just shooting that video. Um, I just, you know, I had kind of an afterthought. For those people that are tenants, that are required to put up a hefty deposit, understand that it's not you and it's not your reputation that I as a property owner or a landlord are asking for a deposit that's equal to a month or a month and a half of rent. It's because of tenants like those that leave that property the way it is. I mean, they're $2,500 behind when I filed eviction. Now, the judge only found $1,600, but either way, at $500 a month, that's still, if we go with the numbers from the judge, that's still three months plus. Plus it cost me $400 to file the complaint and have them served. Um, you wonder why landlords get enough money in deposits to protect themselves. That's the reason. For people that are landlords, let me address you guys. Having a good lease will save your hanging every single time a lease bought from a store is a waste of money paid for online is a waste of money there's nothing really spectacular that needs to go in the lease other than it follows Florida statute whatever um, this was a simple page and a half agreement and it saved me because um, I was very direct, I had plain language, I said exactly what I expected from them, I put in there exactly what I was going to provide to them, and I, you know, it was very, very simple. And that's the best way to do things. They signed it. It's a legal agreement. Regardless of, you know, what this woman thinks that she knows or whatever, she's got somebody who's advising her on legal terms. She claims she went and saw an attorney. And if, she, if, if, if her attorney saw those pictures, um, the attorney, there's no way the attorney could in good conscience.
it's going to cost me more than $2,000 to clean that property up. And I have no deposit from them for the land. And this is what I got to deal with. I'm out three months rent and cleanup, and they've crashed the RV. So now I do have a lawsuit against them, yes. And that will be decided in a month. Um, which is fine. The judge is going to look at the evidence and he's going to make a professional decision. And I totally trust in whatever decision the judge is going to make. I know I'm certainly not in the wrong there. You've, you've seen you've seen what I'm dealing with. Um, I didn't make any money off these people. And on top of everything else, my wife and mother-in-law, because they have three small children and they had another one in December, um, my wife and mother-in-law went out and spent seven, eight, nine hundred, almost a thousand dollars in Christmas gifts to give to their children because they said they didn't have a lot of money and, you know, anybody with three kids and one on the way doesn't have a lot of money. I know when I had two kids, I didn't have a lot of money, so I can only multiply that times three or four, and I understand, but, you know, and I don't... Look, if you want, if you want a family full of kids, great. I, I, I don't fault anybody for that. Everybody's family is their decision. I don't, I don't have anything negative or positive to say about it. I have my opinions, and they're my opinions. But what, what peeves me the most is the fact that they, they think that they have done nothing wrong. They think that I'm the bad guy. That I trashed the property. That I left all this stuff out there that the property wasn't working. You know, when they first moved onto the property, nobody had used that septic tank up front in years. And within a month, it was overflowing. <clears throat> um, I called I called the septic company, $275 out of my pocket. They hadn't even paid the first month of anything yet. And I paid to have the septic tank pumped out and cleaned. Um, and he was there, he knows, but he's claiming he claimed in court that the septic tank was faulty. Um, but yet, after that, I called the septic company. I never heard from them again about the septic. No septic problems were reported to me at all. So if there was any kind of septic problem, they certainly didn't make me aware of it. I can't fix something that I'm unaware of. Um, oh, that's just, that's just the tip of the iceberg as far as the problems that I had and the problems that I've had. Um, with that property so in any event I just wanted to clarify you know anybody who's a prospective tenant of mine I have I have tenants that I've had for years and years and years um, I had one tenant in a property for almost six years I spoke to her like three times total in six years um, I made sure the house was taken care of I made sure that you know the taxes were paid and everything was was good and she paid the rent it was a great relationship she had no problems i sent out pest control once a year did the inspections that needed to be done it was great there was no problems whatsoever so in any event you know i just wanted to i, I wanted to follow up from that first video to this second segment um i'm back home now but um yeah <laughs> It's, it's, it's mind-boggling to me that people can do that kind of destruction and think that there are no problems, that they've done nothing wrong. Okay, I said my piece. You have a good afternoon, and if you're going to rent, get a good lease. If you're the renter, understand that it's people that you're dealing with in the market like that that are the reason that we take applications and we check backgrounds and and all that so there you go have a good afternoon